Something happened back in 2006 that should not be forgotten. Something that is unfortunately still happening today. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA teaming up with your churches and congregations, and they're doing it under the banner of the clergy response teams. What exactly is the clergy response team? Well, according to FEMA documents that I'm about to show you, these particular reports entice pastors to not only quell their population in the event of some kind of catastrophe or emergency event, but they also train your pastors how to, well, tattletale on their congregants if someone is, quote, out of line, how to make their congregations submit to the government under the principles of Roman chapters 13 in the Bible. It also tells pastors that in the event of some kind of martial law scenario, that they are to tell their congregants to, quote, turn in their guns or have gun confiscation. These are the things being taught to our pastors and our clergy people all across the country. And the question I have, is your church now under the pool? Now, before I get into the report, just a quick break from my sponsor. You are either a prepper or you are a future victim. The truth of the matter is emergencies do indeed happen. Hurricanes such as Hurricane Michael, Ivan, and Katrina all wreaked havoc across America, leaving thousands, if not tens of thousands of people out of power and the basic necessities of food. Right now in the Northwestern United States, many states and cities are getting hit with massive flooding, leaving grocery stores empty and people craving the basic necessities. When the devastation hits, it's already too late to prepare. So prepare now when times are good or suffer and pay the consequences later. Ask yourself, could you feed your family or your loved ones in the event of some kind of emergency? If not, then maybe today is the day that you get the emergency food supply that you need. Personally, I only trust and use my Patriot Supply at preparewithlisa.com. I've also managed to convince them to keep the specials that they've had last month and extend them into this month. So right now, you've got the amazing deal of getting a two weeks food supply kit at $75. Even better, you can get a four weeks food supply kit for $147. These kits will get you everything you need. I'm talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner, things like pancakes, potato soup, as well as long grain rice. The food kits at My Patriot Supply last up to 25 years, if not longer, and they ship directly to your door. Now is also the time to take advantage of that 45% off because I don't know how long it'll last. So go to hidewithlisa.com and get food storage today. All right. Back to the broadcast. For starters, I want to state that I've been talking about clergy response teams on my channel since 2006. However, I wanted to re-bring up the situation because it literally is something we should not forget. But let me take you straight to the source so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, the source that you're looking at on the screen is the actual pastor crisis intervention document. It's a document used by DHS and FEMA and churches. In this particular case, it was used by Seventh-day Adventist Church. This report trains pastors how to basically uh, quell or calm their congregations in the event of some kind of catastrophe and to basically submit unto your governing authorities under any and all circumstances using Romans 13 as the springboard. But you can see here, this was published May 15th, 2006. Now the first eight pages of the reports tells you about why Christians should help, why they should get involved, why you as a congregation member need to help your community. Let me just pause right there. Whose job is it to help the community? It is ours. It's Christians, it's people, it's our job and our duties to get involved, specifically the church's job to get involved. So then wouldn't it be okay if they teamed up with FEMA? You see, God calls the churches to do this outside of any organization. He didn't say team up with the government. No, Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and unto God what is God. God never said, let's sign up with one, because what happens in the event that you have some kind of, well, dictator like Stalin or Mao or even another Hitler? 
you could be looking at a whole new set of situations. If you scroll a little further in this report, and I'm really just skimming through it, on page 12, it tells pastors how to handle their people. It tells them how to handle their people who are stressed out and worried. It also says, here's some things you need to remember about human and human dignity basically telling your pastor what to expect in the event of a crisis. It, go, it also goes on to, to explain to a pastor what they should do, questions they should ask, how they should interact with people, and when they need to quote unquote, refer a person to another organization. Maybe sending your congregate member to a psychiatrist in order to help them with their stress level, or maybe sending that congregate to the FEMA or Department of Homeland Security themselves because that member refused to turn in their guns under a martial law scenario. You see where I'm going with this? Why it isn't necessarily a good thing for them to team up with FEMA? Let's go on a little further. Pages 13 and 14 teaches pastors how to listen to their congregation, to listen to every single detail that they're telling them so that they can jot it down and report anything that they need to report. Now in this section of the report, it includes a letter that was actually issued to them asking for church members and pastors to attend a meeting on how to prepare for a flu pandemic. This was an emergency management agency issued report to churches. On the secondary list that you see here, here's Citizens Corp, documents that pastors can use in order to ask for participants who are also going to get involved with FEMA. Then a little further in the report, it goes through an actual presentation. Now I'm just gonna flip through the sides here, the slides here, so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. But these slides basically train your pastors, your volunteers, your congr congregation members, how to aid in the event of some kind of crisis and how to jot down information they need in order to watch the population. The bottom line, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security are teaming up with your churches and they're doing it in the name of safety, in the name of catastrophic events, in the name of quelling the population in the event of some kind of catastrophe. Well, that's the claim that they're doing it. The real motive here is so that they can gain information on the church congregants, so that they can get the congregants of these churches to follow and obey all commands, even if that command goes against God's even if that command breaks the law and wants to take your Second Amendment right, even if that command goes against your First Amendment rights of freedom of speech and freedom of religion, and they're training the pa pastors how to comply. But you know what? That's not the only document I've found. Check this one out. This is a FEMA tip sheet that engages faith-based communities. Now this sheet goes on to detail how someone from FEMA should respond to a church, how a FEMA personnel should act if they were to enter a church. Some examples here are given. Take your hat off if you go in the building. Shake the hands of those you enter. These are the details that they get very specific about, and they're actually right on a lot of these fronts on how to act in a church. But then it goes on in one portion of the report, and I'm going to hone in on this one. Under NVOAD membership, it states, these may serve, talking about church buildings, as significant assets during disaster response. That tip sheet basically trains FEMA how to get in the hands of congregation, how to get in, in the pocket of the church leader, and have them work with FEMA in order to, well, use their facilities in the event of a disaster. One last thing that I wanna show you is a news report and a clip that actually proves under martial law, the clergy response team can be used to take your gun. Check this article out. Homeland Security enlist clergy to quell public unrest if martial law is ever declared. Take a look at the video from that report. If martial law were enacted here at home, like depicted in the movie The Siege, easing public fears and quelling dissent would be critical. And that's exactly what the clergy response team, as it's called, helped accomplish in New Orleans. Uh, Jeff, the primary thing that we say to anybody is let's cooperate and get this thing over with and then we'll settle the differences once the crisis is over. Such clergy response teams would walk a tightrope between the needs of the government versus the wishes of the public. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of a local news report, KSLA. And back from a couple of years ago, mind you. But nonetheless, ever so relevant today as it was back then. So I've got one last question for you. 
Why is it so bad for your church to team up with FEMA? After all, aren't they just there to help in the event of a catastrophe? And shouldn't the church be helping anyhow? The answer to that is yes, the church should be helping 100%. In fact, God calls church members to help their brothers and sisters and even non-believers to help everyone, especially in the event of an emergency. However, God does not tell us to team with other organizations in order to do that. In fact, he makes it very clear that you render unto Caesar what is Caesar and render unto God what is God's. Why? Well, here's the reason. There are a lot of alarm bells that this rings for me. One of those being, imagine that a crisis did happen. FEMA comes in, calls on the clergy response team to help them. Well, now FEMA has taken over your church, your congregation, and your facility. They could very easily remove any prayer, any scripture from any kind of need or helping in that community, 100%. They now have rules over your church, over your congregation. Imagine if it was a step further and they wanted to know who the members of your congregation were. Well, you'd have to hand over those lists to FEMA itself. Imagine if they wanted to know also who was registered with guns and who, who wasn't. Well, they would have to give that information to your FEMA director. There's a lot of lines that can be drawn. If FEMA takes over, you can kiss any and all prayers goodbye. You can kiss all of your freedom goodbye under that scenario. Or how about this? What if some evil dictator was in charge of America? Say another Hitler or a Stalin or a Mao? Say we have a Yi Jinping. You know, over in China right now, they are arresting Christians and Muslim and Falun Gong religion, and they're putting them in re-education centers, working them to literal death. What if we got a leader like Xi Jinping in charge of our country? What's he going to do with these clergy response teams? Well, I'll leave that open for your interpretation, but it's not going to be good. Anyhow, I'd love to get your thoughts, comments, and concerns. Please leave them in the description box below. And please subscribe, like, and share this video everywhere. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.